Tell me a ghost story that sounds completely unbelievable, but is entirely true. The following story was shared with me by a retired federal agent living here in Michigan, and he gave me permission to tell it. I recently retired from the FBI, and I'm now living in Michigan. I spent my entire career in law enforcement. Everything in the story you're about to hear is accurate and true. This all took place back in 2017. I was in northern Michigan, just outside of Petoskey, working on my in-laws' cottage that had fallen into disrepair because they were aging. I was staying there alone, except for my dog. The cottage was built by my wife's great-grandparents and had largely been left untouched since that time. One night, I was up late, laying on the couch and trying to go to sleep. All of the lights were off in the cottage, and the TV was off as well. As I lay there totally awake, the TV suddenly turned on all by itself and all the lights started turning on, starting near the TV, sweeping in a clockwise direction all the way back through the cottage, including the bathrooms, the kitchen, the porch lights, everything. All of these things were on different circuit breakers, so I felt it was impossible that this should not have happened. It was as if something had swept through the cottage at the front where I was near the TV, all the way back to the back of the cottage and out the screen door. I was left speechless and didn't know what to think of it. Nothing like this had ever happened to me in my life. I waited several minutes and then turned off the lights from the back to the front, one by one. I laid back down to go to sleep and decided to leave the TV on. It remained on till I woke up that morning, and I began thinking that somehow I was being given a message. The next night, at about the same time, I was sitting on the couch at the cottage watching TV before bed. It was the strangest thing. I was watching cable TV, and I would watch a 15-minute segment of a program, and then it would go to commercials. What was really weird about it is that after the commercials, the exact same 15 minute segment would play again. This happened to me several times over the course of the night and the next two weeks. Each time I hit the rewind button on the cable company's remote and confirmed that the segment did only play once. I finished the repairs on the cottage and headed back to my home in Southern Michigan. All was well for the next few weeks until one night when somehow I ended up on a very lonely country road. The night was strange, and as I drove down this road, I felt like I was driving straight off the page of reality into some other unknown place. Everything got darker than dark. I could see that I was passing houses, however, it was strange. None of the houses had any of their lights on whatsoever. Usually, people in the country have lights by their barns or their garages to light their home and driveway. There were absolutely no lights anywhere, so the only thing I had to see with were my headlights which also seemed somewhat dim. I remember passing a house with a line of trees on one side along the property line. I passed the house and a tree on the other side of the house. The tree was about 70 feet from the road. I drove by in disbelief. I saw something standing next to the tree. It was blacker than black. It had a head, shoulders, and it looked like it had wings behind it. It was at least six to seven feet tall. What really got me was this creature had blazing red eyes and it felt like those blazing red eyes were gazing completely through my soul. I was in shock. I just kept driving down the road and it took about 20 to 30 seconds for what I had just seen to register in my mind. I became very cold inside. My soul felt empty and then I became frightened. I had been in law enforcement my entire career and I did not scare easily. I know I was awake during the incident because I was driving and would have wrecked the car if I had fallen asleep at the wheel. I decided to keep driving rather than turn back and see it again. And as I made my way home, I was extremely shaken and still afraid. It seemed like an eternity, but I eventually found myself at home parked in my driveway, still shaking and terrified by what I just witnessed. The next day, I searched the internet for what I might have seen, and the best match I could come up with is, it was the Archangel Israel, who is the angel that escorts the dead to the afterlife. I very much believe that what I saw was a warning of bad things to come. I believe that I needed to get my affairs in order in the next week to week and a half, and felt absolutely that I was going to die. Exactly 10 days later, I was traveling home again from Ann Arbor. This time, I took the highway. I came to a highway interchange that went west or east. I should have gone east, but somehow I went west. There was an exit two miles ahead though, so I could turn around. I believed I had gotten off this exit by mistake. Mistake or not, my destiny awaited me. But as I approached the stoplight, something absolutely terrifying took place. When coming to a stop, I literally saw the blazing red eyes again flash before me in the car, quickly from the right to the left. It was as real as anything in this physical world. At that very same time, I heard a spectral voice in my mind, which told me, 
You can't see the future and live. I felt sheer terror and death looming. I stopped for the red light and immediately I felt my heart stop pumping blood to my brain. It's a very strange feeling, but you definitely know it when it happens. It was wrong, terribly wrong. I was trying to grasp what just happened to me and what I just saw and also thought to myself, how long can you hold your breath? Because that is how long you have until you go unconscious and then you die. Immediately I knew I had to do something, so I took my fist and I hit my chest seven times extremely hard. I then realized the wrong way I had taken tonight left me about a mile and a half from a hospital. The light turned green and I drove as fast as I could, hoping I wouldn't pass out. I do not remember pulling into the hospital at all, and I parked where the EMS parked outside the emergency room. It was now slightly drizzling outside. I was able to get my vehicle into park and immediately collapsed onto the steering wheel. I told myself to get up or I would die. I looked up over the steering wheel and I saw the hospital's brick wall, which was more than 60 feet away from me. I was shocked and terrified to see standing against the brick wall was a shadow person, but I could not see any detail. It was dark gray. I believe it was standing there waiting for me to die. Perhaps it was a loved one who had already passed. I didn't know. It continued to stand there for about 10 to 15 seconds with it blinking in and out like changing the static channels on a television. As I tried to get out of my car and go into the emergency room, the shadow person blinked in and out of reality a few more times before disappearing. I was now looking at it with my own eyes and not through the windshield. I was afraid to go in because I didn't know what fate awaited me there. As I got out, I noticed a pair of black leather gloves at my feet. It was wet and they were sitting in a puddle of water, but I picked them up anyway. In my mind, I was tricking the shadow person by having to take these gloves as an excuse to return them to the owner. I went to the hospital and noticed that my feet and hands had turned blue. I sat down for a couple of minutes to catch my breath and to tell the emergency room staff what happened. I was still in shock and disbelief. I sat there for a few minutes and told them I wasn't sure if I needed to be admitted or not. I don't know why I told them this. I sat in the waiting room for a few minutes and took out my phone and tried to take a picture of myself, but the phone would not take a picture of me. I tried several times. The iPhone then completely froze up, which I had never had happen to me before or since. I wanted desperately to believe that I had dropped the phone on the floor after it had frozen up, but it was absolutely knocked from my hands by something. I picked it back up, turned it off, and then on again, and still it wouldn't take a picture of me. I honestly believe that I was in a place somewhere between life and death, and that's why my phone would not allow me to take a picture of myself. I told the staff outside the emergency room that things were not getting better and I needed to be seen. They rushed me into the emergency room faster than I knew was possible. I was literally having the life scared out of me by what I encountered. My heart was pumping erratically, but it was now pumping blood to my brain. I stayed in the emergency room that night and had repeated hot flashes, excruciating pain, followed by chills over and over many times. My phone never did work until I left the hospital the next day, so I couldn't even call my family to let them know where I was. As I was driving home the next day, I was still in shock over everything that had just happened to me and that somehow I managed to escape death. To this day, I will not drive down that lonely country road or even get anywhere near it ever again.